Hello everyone, looking at one of one of these Lenovo tiny PCs today. This one in particular is the Lenovo M625Q. It is an AMD version of this machine. It comes with a 7th gen AMD CPU, which is the E2-9000E. It is a 6 watt CPU, so very, very low end. This is currently being sold for about £300 with 8 gig of RAM. This is a 4 gig version and normally it would come installed with Windows 10 IoT. So that's not particularly useful unless you want to use it as a thin client, which is what this has been sold for. What I want to look at today is what can be upgraded in this, if anything, and how we could look inside and see how it performs using Windows 10 standard, well, Windows 10 Pro, and see how well it performs. So let's start off by getting this opened up, shall we? So one screw on the back, pretty standard stuff. So the whole thing just slides apart. It can be a bit stiff. And in here, we presented with quite substantial heatsink. So as you can fully guess, this machine is perfectly silent. As you will notice immediately, there's not a lot going on. We've got a nice internal speaker, which does work inside Windows. And everything else is shoved under this, quite frankly, massive heatsink. So let's take this off and have a look. And there we go. On the back we've got some heat pads and some thermal paste. And as you can see, it is very, very bare bones. There is nothing on this side of the board, all blank. The only thing you really have is that M.2 Wi-Fi port at the top. Everything else on the back, there's one single RAM slot and one M.2 slot on the back of this board. Take the board out, simple enough. We've got four screws in each corner. And one in the middle, which I'll quickly unscrew now. You also need to remove the riser from there and down here. And this part here, which was nestled in here, screw on the side, just take that out. And after that, the whole board will just slide out. And on the other side of the board, we have everything else. Here we have where the RAM is stored, so it's on the back of the board and the M.2 slot on the back for the hard drive. Now interestingly in the BIOS it stated this was SATA and I assumed it was just a flash module because of the speed but we do have a full M.2 slot right there so it would appear we can upgrade it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some more RAM in here and change the SSD and see if we get slightly better performance. Because as you will see here, the performance with the default setup is pretty dire. Trying to run some basic games, you're not getting a lot. And in PC Mark, it scores a very, very low score and took a long time to complete. So in its current setup in Windows 10, the performance is pretty poor. You think maybe you can use it for some older games or emulation, but overall it is just direly slow. Probably because of the lack of the RAM more than anything, because it's using a gig for the onboard GPU. And it only has just under 3 gig for Windows, and Windows 10 is a bit more than that. And the CPU is incredibly slow. Granted, it's only 6 watt, and at full load, it only is put, the whole system only pulls about 12 watts, so very low power machine. But you'd expect to get a little bit more performance out of this because it is still, in terms of the CPU power, it should be on par with, let's say, a mid range Core 2 Duo from the 775 socket. Slow, but still usable in some senses. So let's pop some more RAM in here and change the M.2 drive and see what we get. As you can see, we've got some plastic clips here and some thermal pads. So these are just your classic pull tabs, I haven't seen it for a while, just give them a pull and they do come out. So let's pop the RAM out. In here we've got some DDR4, 4 gig, we're going to get 2666 megahertz which I'm going to replace it with 
here's an 8 gig stick. We're going to get 2133, which was what this was running at when I had that running there. So I didn't think that it would be fast, but let's just pop that in there. This machine should be able to take it to 16 gig, I believe, from what I can tell. But since it's only a single slot, no guarantees that it will take anything greater than the 8 gig. But we'll see if more RAM makes a difference, even though it is slower RAM. And we'll just pop this M2 SSD out. It was firmly down. Not stuck down, but it was pretty firm. That does have some stickiness to it. And we'll just install one of these. Slot it down there. There we go, nice and firm. Get it right around. Let's get it all back together. We'll pop the heat sink back on. Put some fresh vinyl paste on there. Granted, there's not a lot, but it's only a very small chip. And then just place this massive heat sink back on. And then pop the case back on. There we go. And there we go. All sorted. So let's look how well this machine performs then. In CPU Z, we only score 111 single thread and 185 multi thread, so pretty dismal, but not completely useless. With the new SSD in here, we're scoring over 3000 megabytes reading and over 1000 megabytes writing, so there's going to be no bottleneck there regarding reading and writing. So that's pretty impressive. I haven't got a comparison to the previous hard drive, but it was pretty slow. Looking at a 3D Mark benchmark, this is Wildlife. It's designed for mobile devices and low end stuff. It's pretty poor. We're getting single digit frame rates throughout, and it only scores. 869 points so pretty poor there how about watching some videos in 1080 60fps this is just a youtube video i made a while ago just showing some borderlands footage as you can see you get an occasional drop frame but it does hold it so it's pretty impressive that it can do that of course it might vary from video to video but you should be able to watch some netflix and amazon prime on here no problem at 1080 now running a game like Final Fantasy XIV is just a no-go. Anything that 3D intense is just not going to run on this kind of machine, even in its lower settings. And here, looking at Half-Life 2, it didn't run very well before. But as you can see, we're now getting the 60 FPS mark and above. So far more stable and smooth. And in inside areas, you're getting above 100 or the high 90s at times. So much better now that we've got some more RAM. Now looking at Portal 2, this ran really poorly before with the amount of RAM we had in here. We're getting single digit frame rates. Same setting as before. And as you can see, now we're hitting 60 FPS occasionally, with the high 40s being about the average you would see. So much more playable and just shows what a bit more RAM can do with a machine like this. So, in conclusion, the selling point of this machine is definitely that 6 watt CPU. You will need to upgrade the RAM to do anything serious on here. So anything productivity wise or gaming wise you need more RAM. But it's perfectly capable of running basic 1080p videos and some very light gaming. So we'll revisit the gaming aspect of this in another video showing what it can and can't run and what it can run very well. This will probably work very well as a DOS box machine. And if you're planning on doing some retro gaming and disconnecting it from the internet, you might benefit from using something like Windows 7 which has lower RAM requirements. But overall, it's a very interesting and fun little machine to play with. Of course, you're limited on that hard drive space to one M.2 slot. But it might work quite well for a little server. Some maybe simple NAS box, some files sharing, and maybe a web server or something like that. So it's certainly worth revisiting. Wouldn't pick one up new, unless it's for business purposes. But if you can pick one up secondhand, then they might be worth getting... Just manage your expectations on what it can actually do.
so that's all I really want to say about this machine in particular. Any questions, just ask them below. I'll try to respond. Any games you want to see that this machine can run, also let me know. I'll probably revisit this in a couple of weeks. But until then, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. So, goodbye.